rising sign is every hour as the Earth's tilting, a new sign pops up. And that's the new rising, okay? Next thing that we pay attention to in a chart is the top of the chart. If you want to blow somebody's mind with a reading, you 100% should not know Jack Dilly squat. You should be able to go into that and be like, oh shit, this is what I see, this is what I'm feeling right now. How do you resonate with that? I usually talk for about 10 minutes of pure channeling and going boom, 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 bing, bing through the chart, all the progressions, this, it's hitting that and that, and because I can do a reading for 14 hours straight if I really wanted to, but I want to hit them in the first 10 minutes as hard as I can with the truth, so I bury myself into that soul and get in there and get in with the guides and get the whole show and start to feel everything. If you're a good astrologer, you should be able to do astrology in your head because astrology is multiple chess boards, multiple chess games at the same time, and you better be able to play all the boards without looking at the board. After infancy and puberty, the adolescent is faced with a mind-challenging choice. What type of life path to follow? After hesitating for a while, they must finally decide between two possible paths. Not where the client wants to go, not where the world wants to go, but where God is showing and happening. Period. Like, I want, I want to talk about my son and Leo. I love my son and Leo, but it's not about my son and Leo right now. As we are looking at, now we're looking in a different angle, Aquarius, right? So we looked at it from like an, a, a third eye, like all seeing eye and how to see. So, so look at how I created in this image, the lines that come to these epiphany moments that you then see from everywhere. So imagine this area down here, but back it all the way up, right? Back it all the way up to, this is the age of Aquarius line here. That if I could put it right here, right? Like, you know, behind it would be the age of Pisces. And this is the cross bridge over. And this is you bringing in, constantly bringing your stuff into the future. It's not like, what research you do or stuff. Yeah, research matters and all that stuff matters, but it's more about what you just keep moving forward in the hypergate. What's showing up now? What's happening? Okay, bam, 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 and figuring out that moment and figuring out the flow and getting you do, 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 do. And that's what, bang. It's just, just a, and it gives you an answer, bam. So when I make a prediction, it's that. Do, 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 do. That, that, this, that, boom, 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 boom. Last time that, oh, what, what, what retrograde last year? Mercury, oh, Mercury, oh, what, what happened last time Mercury crossed over? Oh yeah, I went from like, there's, don't worry about mass, don't worry, these are a little, oh, there's, oh, now, oh wow, there's 10 people on the boat that fucking have coronavirus? Oh wow, this country's got to get, oh, we're waiting for confirmation from the CDC? Now they're making this sound like it's some serious shit. What is a spell? His eighth house ruler actually would be Pluto, which has no aspects from her at all. So it's missing that eighth house, okay? Remember I showed you, we have a fifth, we have a seventh, we have an eighth, and we have the two boxes, and we have the center. His eighth house ruler, Pluto, has no aspects to it, no planets of hers are in this zone. Mars and Capricorn's like, I'm gonna give myself the authority to do it. I'm not gonna wait on questions like Mars and Libra. Mars and Libra's like, well, should I do it or not? <laughs> Hello, Mars and Libra. Mars and Capricorn's like, um, why are you even talking right now? Like you already should have made the fucking decision. Hang up, you know what I mean? Cause Mars is like fucking got the authority from Saturn. Here's your orders, go do it. And I think that's been the hardest part, and that is the hardest part, is understanding how to brand yourself, which we're gonna cover in this course, because it is still a three-dimensional capital-based economy, 
right? Paying for a service or paying for a product and not having it be so woo woo that people think that they're buying, you know, back in the 90s and the 2000s, some infomercial, um, you know, kind of weird, you know, capsule for diet pills. And that guy actually ended up going to jail. I don't know if you know that. Pluto Librans are the ones that are about justice first, right? That's what it's about, justice. Relationships we know, how we relate though. It's also about peace. Well, you can't have peace without war. Opposite is Aries. There is no utopia. You would think he doesn't like to be in Cancer because he dips down. But Saturn in Scorpio gets an underlying view of the situation. And the, that underlying view is the timing of the divine, the timing of using the occult. Also, it's the house of secrets. So secrets that work and secrets that don't. You know, it's also a house of trust. So every Saturn Scorpio or Saturn 8th house person has to learn how to master trust. You won't receive shit if you have walls up. So the number one issue with Saturn Scorpio or Saturn 8th house people is walls. You can't have walls up to use the occults like a belief system about Christianity. You have to go past that boundary. You want to have an amazing deep relationship well, you have to have sex. You can't put up a wall. You want to express yourself fully and actually have people think that you're impactful and trust you. Then you have to be vulnerable and real. You can't be in the shadow. So I see in 99% of Saturn Scorpio or Saturn 8th house life, they lived a shadow life in the present reality that they were born in the incarnation they had to overcome that and use that transformative energy to bring it to the light 